Next step. Well, once we know the strains, we would like to know the displacements. Well, we just can place the general equation, the geometrical equation. The geometrical equation, we would like to know the strains as the symmetric gradient of the displacements. So we do that. We do that. The strain epsilon x, the derivative of u x with respect to x, epsilon i is that, gamma x y is that. This is a system that can be integrated, and then we can obtain the displacements. The displacements as a function of what? Well, if the data is function of x, y, and t only, the displacement x and y is a function of x, y, and t only. Okay? So look, then, the displacements u, x, and u, y, the displacements, the in-plane displacements, doesn't depend neither on the thinness, so to speak. Okay? So everything depends only on the position of the plane and eventually the time. Well, there will be something else in this equation. What happens with the displacement uz? Well, it can be obtained with some additional equations or geometrical equations, but look, it doesn't play any role. I don't need uz. So yeah, forget it. I don't need uz. I don't, I don't, I don't use the displacement in this out of plane direction which will be very small, tiny displacement, because I assume that the thickness is very small, so, I mean, it's negligible, so it doesn't matter how much is it. So, finally, the geometric equations that I apply are just the geometric, three geometric equations, epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy, as function of the derivative of ux and uy, that, after integration, allow obtaining the displacement. So, look, finally, what is the, the picture after that? It's a problem in which now the number of unknowns in terms of displacements are no longer three, are just two. Ux and Ui, first. Second, everything depends only, and then, of course, the strains are only three, and the stresses are only the in-plane stresses. There are some additional stresses. Well, they are zero. And there are some additional strains. That one doesn't play any role. But eventually, if I wanted to know that, I could compute them using this equation. Right? And look what I've achieved with that. Now, if I have to solve that problem, we look at, like the, at that, I have to consider instead of three equations, like in the Navier equations, I have two, which have to be integrated. That's, that's right. But the domain of integration is two dimension in space, x and y, z doesn't play any role, and eventually the dimensions of time. Okay? So it's a much simplified problem that, don't forget, it comes up from an idealization of something. What are the kinds of problems in which this idealization is proper? The ones that is, are shown here. Thin stresses, thin, thin structures, which are loaded in the plane. For instance, a, a slab, and a slab like that, which is only loaded in the mean plane. Typically, in civil engineering structural analysis, is the case of deep beams. Deep beams are beams in which, you know, the, the hypothesis is that the, the uh, two dimensions are small with respect to the third one, is no longer right, because the dip of the beam is similar, the same order, than the span or the length of the beam. So, beam theory can no longer be applied here. So, they have to be solved with a more general theory, the beams. And you, that's typical structure that we find many times in, in engineering, in, for instance, in tall buildings. In tall buildings, they, you know that they are prevented against wide actions by construction very deep beams from the top, from the bottom to the top, and these deep beams cannot be no longer computed as beams if you want to do right. You have to compute them in the plane stress. 